Welcome back, DIY enthusiasts. In today's project, we have something truly special for you. We're going to dive into the world of network bonding routers and show you how to create your very own using a Raspberry Pi. With this setup, you'll have the power to combine multiple networks and unlock blazing fast internet speeds, even in areas with weak or unreliable connections. It's an innovative solution that can transform your online experience. So, let's roll up our sleeves and embark on this exciting DIY journey. To initiate this project, we will begin by setting up the Raspberry Pi. Firstly, let's proceed with the installation of the Raspberry Pi OS. The first step is to download and install the Raspberry Pi Imager tool, which will help us write the Raspberry Pi OS onto an SD card. Open your web browser and go to the official Raspberry Pi website. On the website, navigate to the Raspberry Pi Imager section. Click on the download button. The Imager tool is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Once the download is complete, open the installer file and follow the on-screen instructions to install the Raspberry Pi Imager. Writing Raspberry Pi OS onto a micro SD card. Here's how you can do it. Insert the SD card you plan to use into your computer's SD card slot or use an SD card reader. Launch the Raspberry Pi Imager tool that you just installed. In the Imager, you will see a list of available operating systems. Find and select Raspberry Pi OS. Next, click on the Choose SD Card button and select the SD card you inserted earlier. Click on the Advanced Options which allow you to configure items such as Set Hostname, Enable SSH, Password or Key Authentication, Configure Wi-Fi, Set Local Settings, etc. before you even write the image to your SD card. Click on the Write button to start writing the Raspberry Pi OS onto the SD card. The Raspberry Pi Imager will now download the necessary files and write them to the SD card. This may take a few minutes to complete. And that's it. You have successfully downloaded and written the Raspberry Pi OS onto your SD card. We are going to use a Raspberry Pi 4B for this project. For the ease of connections we have put the Raspberry Pi in an Argon 1B2 case. You can watch our previous video where we have done unboxing and setup of this case. Configure the Raspberry Pi. Remove SD card from your computer and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Connect the necessary peripherals to the Raspberry Pi, such as a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Power on the Raspberry Pi by connecting it to a power source, such as a USB cable or power adapter. Once the Raspberry Pi boots up, you will see the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. Next, we are going to install Speedify on the Raspberry Pi. Before we begin the installation, ensure that your Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet, either via Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Find the IP address of Raspberry Pi and open terminal via PuTTY. The next step is to update the package lists on your Raspberry Pi. This ensures that you have the latest information about available software packages. In the terminal, run the following commands one by one. sudo apt update, sudo apt dist upgrade, sudo apt clean, this will delete unnecessary files that were uploaded during the update. sudo reboot, when your Raspberry Pi is restarted, you will use the latest version of Raspbian. With the package lists updated, we can now proceed with the installation of Speedify on your Raspberry Pi. In the terminal, enter the following command and press enter. Congratulations! Speedify is now installed and running on your Raspberry Pi. You can find the Speedify icon under Internet Option in Raspberry Pi OS Dashboard. To use Speedify on Raspberry Pi, you will require a Speedify account for logging in. Head to Speedify.com on your browser to register your account. Speedify does offer subscription plans for their service, which provide additional features and benefits. For up-to-date information on the current subscription plans and pricing, I recommend visiting the official Speedify website. There, you can explore the available plans, compare their features, and select the one that best suits your needs. Additionally, Speedify may have special offers for new users, so be sure to check for any promotions before subscribing to a plan. In next step, we will log in to Speedify on Raspberry Pi. Now, let's explore how we can bond multiple connections using Speedify on Raspberry Pi. In this demonstration, we will bond four different connections, two network dongles, 
a LAN connection, and a Wi-Fi connection. To proceed, make sure you have all the necessary hardware connected to your Raspberry Pi. To log in to Speedify on your Raspberry Pi, use the Speedify account that you have recently created. Slide the toggle button to the on position to start the network bonding process. This enables Speedify to start combining the bandwidth of all the connected networks. You can monitor the status of your network bonding in the Speedify app interface. The Speedify UI dashboard provides a graphical interface where you can access and control various features and settings of Speedify. Through the dashboard, you can monitor the status of your internet connections, view real-time data usage, and configure advanced options. Here are some key elements you might find in the Speedify UI dashboard, settings, on-off switch, status, real-time graphs, internet connections, completed streams and statistics. Available internet connections will automatically appear in the interconnections on the Speedify dashboard. You can click the label to bring up detailed statistics and settings for that connection. Make sure all the connection's preference is set to primary. Next, we will set up the Raspberry Pi as a bonding router. Up until now, we have explored the process of utilizing network bonding on Raspberry Pi with Speedify. However, you might be wondering how to share this bonded connection with other devices via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. The great news is that Speedify can be configured to share the bonded VPN connection as a router accessible through Ethernet or Wi-Fi, allowing other devices to connect and benefit from it. In this case, we will focus on setting up a wired Ethernet bonding router by configuring Speedify on the Raspberry Pi accordingly. In our particular setup, we employed a USB to LAN converter to expand the Raspberry Pi's connectivity options. As displayed on the Raspberry Pi OS home screen, this additional network port is recognized as ETH1. Consequently, we now have two LAN network ports available, ETH0 and ETH1. In our setup, we will assign the built-in network port, ETH0, for the distribution of our bonded network. This port will be utilized by Speedify to distribute the bonded internet connection to other devices. On the other hand, the USB to network converter port, ETH1, is specifically designated for connecting the Raspberry Pi to the external LAN network. This distinction allows for separate functionalities and ensures that the bonded network is shared effectively while maintaining connectivity to the external LAN. In the terminal, Use the command sudo nano slash etc slash speedify slash speedify.com to access the speedify configuration file. Locate the line enable underscore share equals zero and change it to one. Then, add the line share underscore interface equals eth0 below it, where eth0 represents the specific port through which the bonded internet will be shared from the Raspberry Pi. To save the file, Press Ctrl plus X and then select Y when prompted. In the end, restart the Speedify by running the following command. Automatic start. By default, the Speedify background service will run after installation and when the device boots, but Speedify will not automatically connect to the VPN by default. To set Speedify to automatically connect, run the following command. Automatic start UI. If you want Speedify UI to automatically show when you boot your device, run following command. You can refer to the video description below for a comprehensive list of all the commands used in this tutorial. Now that your network bonding router is set up and ready for use, ensure that all the connections are properly plugged in. Additionally, connect the LAN output from the Raspberry Pi directly to the desired device where you want to experience the combined speed of the bonded network. In our upcoming video, we will conduct thorough testing of this bonding device in various scenarios to evaluate its performance. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you again in our next video. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you and don't miss out on future content. Subscribe now. Take care and goodbye. Gadgets Pod. Understanding Technology.